Hey guys, so set 10 for our team fight tactics like has now been released. There was quite a few changes in the new set, mainly being as when you start the game, that there's no champions anymore. So you can't choose Master Yi or any of those other people to give you those extra little buffs at the start of the game. Another change I guess they made is that they added the Emerald rank into ranked. So it might be a little bit longer or different for you to get to any higher ranks in the season or set. There's another big change is that the shops are a little bit different considering that the uh they're still all the normal units but now there's things called headliners where essentially they are automatically two star units and they give you extra traits for your characters so for example if you had a shurima character a single shurima would give you two of a people's traits instead of just the one another thing that changed is that the all the augments, not augments, the trait. What am I thinking? The, skill, the skills or traits, whatever you pick at the start of the game. There, some have been added or removed, obviously. Then all the names have been simplified. So I think there's gold for augment, all augments gold, and artifact and rolls that are not based on the different areas in League of Legends anymore. Now, another change is that the lobby <laughs> there is also pretty different, mainly just being a skin difference, but. I kind of like the look of it. It's very energetic, very colorful. Kind of gives you a vibe of the season, how everything is... Everything you knew before is different. And then also now music-based, apparently. I'm fairly sure I saw people saying that music, depending on what traits you choose, are actually different. So if you choose, like, the emo traits, I think you get, like, a different sound or music for what is playing during the game. Is when you do load into the game, the first thing you might notice is that every character is a different skin. Like with Vi right there, she obviously looks very different to what she had previously. And uh, all, the, all the traits are different as well. She has Punk and Mosher instead of, I guess, Pelted and Boozer previously. As and as you can see there, the Evelyn has a little weird board around them, and when you buy them, they are automatically two-star. So unlike last season where you had to buy three of every character to get them two star you can buy, buy a single one which you can then essentially build your team around so if you see somebody early that you like to build like with Evelyn get them two star they might get a trait early on then you can build your team around that person and another thing about those headliners is you can only have one per team so if you try to buy a second one also for the same trait or a different trait the game will refuse to let you buy that person so even if you're trying to buy them just get a free two star you cannot do that. You'd have to sell the one you already have and attempt to buy that second one instead of the current one that you have. Another thing that helps with is that you no longer need to build as many emblems for teams. So for example, like Ionians would need two emblems to get the full buffs. You know, all this, you can get your headliner and then a single emblem for them to be able to get the full effects for that trait. Now, lots of different characters have changed. Like, I you know Kaisa is now a physical attacker mainly, and her ability is different to right? where she just dashes two spaces and launches a single missile instead of her barrage of missiles like previously. And another bigger change is that for anybody that uses Kale, previously she just didn't have any mana. Pretty much every basic attack she shot out would have, or every third, you know, because I don't think most of you are going to get level 9 most of the time, but every basic attack would throw out her a little wave of damage. In this, she actually does some mana where I believe it's every, about every five attacks where it then activates her ability. You know, unless you have like a Spirit Shoji and then obviously it's going to be a less, but she now has her ability that procs every 50 mana. As with part of the patch notes as well, they did change the leveling of characters. Uh, generally, it's a little bit lower for every single tier. Like, I, you can just automatically get to level 10 now instead of having to use the dragon champion or whatever to get the uh, augments to where you can choose to level up to level 10. And also the gold costs have also been decreased by quite a bit. Generally in the shop as well, it's a lot easier to get higher tier characters early in the game as most of the shop percentages haven't changed. Except it's just overall harder to get level 5s or 5 costs. I guess there's also a bunch of item changes like mainly for defensive items, the bramble vest. No longer protect, protects against crit damage, but does grant you extra health and a percentage of reduced damage from attacks. And same goes for the Dragon Skull, I believe. 
but they also both have reduced armor or magic resist. Things like Rage Blade now give you less attack speed at the start, but do give you more over time because the attack speed per attack is now 5% instead of 4%. So they removed the Rapid Fire Cannon that I would get with two bows. They did replace it with a red buff. It's similar. Gives you extra, a lot of extra attack speed, but it doesn't give you the extra range. But it does give you 8% extra damage. And all of your abilities burn and wound targets. Personally, I'm not kind of not a fan of that change, because I liked having the extra range on some of my characters. Like with again, a game I tried playing earlier, I tried to build a Yasuo. I wanted to give him a ranged cannon, so that I could have him 2 star. But I couldn't really do that because the item is no longer in the game. Also, he's oh, one cost now instead of being a four cost, so much of the costs for champions have also been changed. Like, Cassanta used to be a five star, five cost. He is now a one cost. So they just kind of randomized everything pretty much. The only issue I did have with this patch is that most, a lot of the characters kind of look the same to me or different. I mean, every, all the skins are different. But a lot of the portraits ended up looking similar to each other to me when I started, so I couldn't tell what I was buying or who I was trying to go for. So now every single, pretty much every single trait is different. Like again, how the Vi used to be built over, now she's some random thing. And Katarina used to be Noxus, now it's Country and Crowd Diver. After a few games, I did kind of get used to the changes, but for anybody first playing the new patch, they're going to be very confused. Now the item selection, or the item... The item carousel is pretty much the same, uh, except obviously the new emblems are going to be in there later on. Don't know whether changes have really been made to the item carousel. Now again, with all the skin changes, it is going to be a little bit harder to tell who you're actually trying to go for on the carousel. Uh, you know, unless you play this patch for a little while and get used to how all the new character skins look. Which currently is giving me issues because I just don't recognize almost any of the characters. Like, I recognized who Mordekaiser was and Miko, but that was about it from what I could see. Otherwise, I was looking at them trying to wonder who they were. Personally, I do like the new update. I feel like I'm playing this better than I was the last set. I was, I feel like eight, set eight, I was doing fairly well. Set nine, I did terribly for the most of the season. And set ten, I'm already doing fairly well, considering that I didn't know what like, any of the characters looked like when I started built, playing it. So from set 8 to set 10, I think I do prefer this, uh, at least so far from what I've played. But it's still going to be taking some getting used to, to get used to all the new traits for every character and try to remember who was who and what blocks to what. Because again, like, you have an 8-bit KDA and a Hyperpop, all similar looking color palettes. So that's my main issue with all the new, my main issue with all the new traits and character portraits is you can't really tell as easily who is who and what kind of team they belong to or traits. With all the pentakill and the country characters and the emo characters, I guess, they're all fairly different. But aside from those traits, you really need to be paying attention to who you're actually buying and keeping a better eye on your shop, because they're a lot harder to differentiate from each other. And again, with all the new traits, it is going to be a lot harder to remember which team, you know, ability traits that each person belongs to. Because now every, every single character has their new traits for new, new team matchups. So it might be more balanced, but it's going to be just a little harder to remember what is what and who goes with who. Because Monte looks nothing like he did in the last season. I could kind of tell he belonged to the Shorima team previously. But now I just... What, I don't even know what that's supposed to be. So I think this season is going to be a bit more enjoyable for me. Just because there's a lot of changes, a lot of new characters. I think is going to be a lot easier for me to build now no, on just because of her changes with a lower mana. So that I can just spam her instead of having to wait or to get a 4 cost character or to only use Void Tunes to be able to use her. Because like her and Gale are some of my favorite units to actually be using. But if you guys have been playing this season or patch, you know, set, whatever, what do you think? Let me know down below. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe as well. And I'm probably just going to go ahead and let the rest of this match play out. Because I, you know... It was, it was a really good match, that's all I'm going to say about it.
side. Everyone loves an underdog.
They may be down, but they're not out. 